right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Sky Stevens, who is on the Gold Coast in Australia. How are you doing, Sky? I'm really well, thank you. How are you, John? Great, I'm great, great. Gold Coast, not a bad place to be, eh? I definitely am biased, but I'd say it's the best spot in Australia. <laughs> and uh, Sky is uh, from the Association of Professional Builders. And this was, uh, this was an organization that you started, correct? Yeah, yeah. So this is my um, father and my company, mm -hmm. the Association of Professional Builders. That's it. Yeah. And what we're going to talk about today is building a repeatable sales process that educates prospects, builds rapport and trust and moves each prospect seamlessly through each stage of that process to getting to, to a yes and obviously to a happy customer. So um, let's start off, um, Sky, right? Uh, practically every organization that has, a, that has a sales team would claim to have a, a sales process. But as we know, sometimes it's either something that has kind of come about organically, something that maybe a, they had a sales manager that you know 10 years ago built the sales process and it hasn't been touched since. Or it's something that, yeah, there's a kind of loose sales process, but reality sales people kind of follow whatever process they follow. So why is it important to pay attention to your sales process? Well, firstly, I think a lot of people think they have one, um, mm -hmm. but they just know that a, they get an inquiry and they want to make a sale and they think that's their sales process, but without having structure and milestones to get to, you never really know what you're trying to do in each conversation. And so it's all a bit loose. It's then terrible when you try and scale up because everyone's having their own version of what they think is trying to happen. And there's no consistency in your numbers. So it, it starts falling apart whenever you try and put some sort of scale into it. Yeah, and one of the things that, you know, some people will say, oh, you know, they'll kind of hide behind the idea, well, you know, process and structure, you know, you don't want to constrain salespeople too much because they're artists, you know, they're not. And, and we know that that's actually the opposite of what has been proven through research from the top sales uh, performing organizations. But tell me a little bit about when you started getting into the process of, of, of sales, what is it that really struck you that was, that was really needed? Um, I, th I think the structure, because like what you just said, a lot of people say like, no, your best performers, they need to be free and, you know, do what they do best. But if you can outline a structure and even work with your top performer, right, to get that structure in place, there is freedom, so to speak, in their personality that comes through when sure. they get to move their prospects through the process. Um, but I, I think, yeah, the number one thing that sticks out is just the lack of organization. Whereas if you can put a system in place that just very naturally organizes salespeople, which, you know, some of the better salespeople um, aren't a hundred percent organized all the time. It gives them the system where at least it can keep them on track quite regularly and then they can do what they do best. And obviously if you don't have a, a well-defined and well-structured sales process, it's very hard then from a management point of view to figure out what's happening with your, with your, sa with your uh, sales what's happening with your salespeople. It's very hard to do any analytics or analysis of what's going on if you don't have something to benchmark it off of. Exactly, exactly right, John. Like what we do at APV, the association, we mm -hmm. work with custom home builders specifically. Yeah. And so when we give a um, proven sales process, like a blueprint to our builders, the main reason we do that is because we set them all up with specific KPIs, right? You cannot get any KPIs out of not having a sales process. We want to know not just the end result of how many sales and contracts you make, what's every metric in between? And if any company follows a proven system, you can benchmark and have KPIs for each step. So that, the big thing here, right, is you know where it's broken. Some people just think there's a massive sales problem because they're not getting the contracts at the end. But if you could have milestones in your sales process and then you have your benchmarks for each conversion in that process, 
well, you know, actually, and you can pinpoint exactly where things are falling over and falling down. And as a manager and as even a company owner, that's so important because you're not blind anymore. You're making data driven decisions. Yeah. And on top of that is then you can actually start to drill down a little more and you can start to see that uh, maybe individual salespeople that they struggle at certain points in the sales process, maybe they're fantastic opener door openers. They're great in the early stages, but they're not the greatest closers or they fall down in the, in the middle. I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of uh, insights that you can gather, but if you have nothing, as we said, to benchmark it off of, then you're really just flying blind. Exactly. And it opens it up for, well, what do we need to do training on this week, for example? Because when you have a proven system in place, you have your KPIs in place and you're, you're measuring and reporting on it. We all know we should be running regular training, sales training, team meetings. Mm -hmm. We know what to cover and talk about so that we can constantly be improving and tweak those numbers and make them better and beat ourselves constantly. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the sales process itself. When you say educating, educating prospects and building rapport and trust, what does that look like? So this, you'll understand this 100% when you look at an industry like construction. This is the best mm -hmm. example I can give to you because custom home builders um, Typically, without a, a proven sales process in place and without any form of education, they get, can get very frustrated with prospects who don't know realistically what they should be budgeting for a new home or the process and things like that. And I think that's true in any industry. But if we take construction, consumers are putting their money into, to be honest, what's going to be their largest asset, the biggest purchase they've ever made. There's a lot of money at stake here. Um, so they don't really know a lot really as um the owner of whatever industry we're in we're the experts we're the authority so we can't expect someone to come into our sales funnel and know as much as we do we actually have to take the time to educate but what we teach is go a step further you want them to be educated by the time they reach out to you and so your sales process starts all the way into your marketing process really and it's delivering that content it's answering all the questions that you're going to get asked in the sales process, like how much should I be budgeting? How much does it actually cost to design and build a home of this size? You know, how long does it take to build or whatever your frequently asked questions are at the tail end of your sales conversations, answer that in your marketing so that by the time they come into your sales process, you have a much more educated client and it actually makes moving them through the rest of your milestones much more uh, much smoother and much, much easier because it's the natural next step. There's so much trust built because you've already, you've answered all their questions. And I think that's a really good point uh, about the fact that there's a lot of things that salespeople will encounter later in their sales process that if they do educate the market, you know, if they do align with the marketing people and they do actually talk to each other, which is always a good thing if if you can get that to work. Um, but to your point then is you can actually anticipate a lot of these questions up front and educate even before somebody gets into the process. Because the other thing, let's face it, whenever we're in a, whenever as a buyer, we're in a process and say in this example, you know, we're, we're looking to, you know, build a custom home. We can, we can get, we can get a little uptight about our lack of knowledge, right? And and get a little bit nervous and then maybe get it. And because of that, a little bit defensive and a little suspicious. So there's a lot of things that a good salesperson needs to kind of alleviate. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then, you know, when egos come into it, that's when it all falls mm -hmm. down. So we just need to, you know, check our ego. We're here to serve. We are here to help. Um, and that's the attitude we need to go in with because that's genuinely and generally how you can even build any connection with anyone. You go in trying to help that person. Stop trying to sell so early on. Mm -hmm. Try and educate them. And then it's a very natural process from that point. You can still use your sales skills. But I think going back to something else you just said, trying to get your sales mm -hmm. and marketing teams to talk, they should be besties. Your sales mm -hmm. and marketing teams should be best friends because they they are on the same team um, and they help each other constantly. Um, and I think that's that, that alignment in the beginning is the game changer, you know? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. You could totally agree with you. And um, the fact is that the lines between marketing and sales are pretty blurred these days, particularly. I mean, once upon a time, people used to love, because people for some reason love lines of demarcation. I don't know why, but they just do. Uh, and they loved it when, you know, marketing did this much and then just threw it over the wall and then sales ran with it and they never really spoke to each other. I mean, now just because of the way people buy all of the different ways they interact with your brand and your company, that's no longer something that is practical if it ever was. And so they do, they do need to work, work more closely together. But just coming back to your point there about the other thing about the salesperson in, in this example and, and in most is that this, the salesperson has this wealth of knowledge, like, you know, custom home builder, they build loads of homes. They know about all these different things that have happened in the past. So they have a wealth of knowledge to, to impart to the to their prospect or their customer, and that's really what you value from a salesperson if it's done in the right way. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, well, think so long ago, pre-internet, right? Mm -hmm. The salesperson had all of the information, so people had to go into someone's office, go into the car dealership to get any yeah. information from that salesperson. The salesperson was the gatekeeper of information. 10 years has gone by, the internet is live. We can get any bit of information we want before we even talk to a salesperson. So why are we still trying to negate that information? Be the provider of that information online, especially as a salesperson, make it come from you, you know, be in those content videos, write blog articles for the company, whatever it may be, be that authority, because people will start to know you, they're going to like you and trust you just from what they've seen online. So when they're even ready to have a hint of a sales conversation, who do you think they're going to go to? Oh, I like John from mm -hmm. this company, I want to talk to John, and they're going to go straight to you. Yeah, and, it, and it's interesting also that that point about there's so much information available, but we also have crossed over into the into where there's so much information available. There's too much information available. And therefore, part of your job now is not so much to inform. Well, it's almost to help the person cut through the noise into what's real, what's the kind of information they need, maybe debunk some things or whatever, or maybe just help you because you're so overwhelmed by all the information that you receive is like helping you to focus in on what's important. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a big, big task for anyone in sales or marketing, cutting through the noise, coming through with absolute clarity. And again, being there to serve, being helpful. The sale, I, to an extent, can take care of itself. I think we need to change our attitude at the very start um, so that we can build that trust with someone. And then they're in our sales process and we can move them through. But I think it's that beginning phase that's so precious that's almost getting wasted sometimes because we're just, we're thinking of our end result, not quite simply the next step in the process. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the fact that, uh, as I said, I mean, it can be an overwhelming process for, for a customer. So, so it, they do need to, I mean, this is where sales process makes so much sense because they do need to go through a kind of step by step and gradually progress through. Um, otherwise, it's, it's too overwhelming. The other the interesting thing, if we go back to sales and marketing alignment for a moment is, uh, so as we said, like the sales process, it needs, they need um, support and different types of assets and things to use at different stages of the sales process. So that's another reason why sales and marketing need to work together, because if you have a defined sales process, there are things you need in each stage that you really need marketing's help to provide to you. Yeah, it's all of the collateral, right? Mm -hmm. So what about those glossy brochures that you hand out when someone's walking away so that you're mm -hmm. leaving them with someone? What about all of the emails that are getting sent automatically on autoresponders in the background just to keep them warm while you're in a sales conversation? What about the detailed proposal? Your sales team aren't going to make that. Well, they could, but unfortunately, they're not going to make it look as good as if you yeah. involved your marketing team and you've got that brand cohesion there. So that's why they need to work so closely. Plus, think about it. Think about the benefits that your marketing is going to have. If they start working on the sales collateral, they can start um, a, make it consistent with the other marketing, but B, they can talk about, they're going to know a lot more of the questions and objections on the sales side. So they can make a point to answer that on the front end marketing as well. It's, it's a beautiful relationship if, if we let it um, happen. Yeah, no, it is. And, and, uh, and I love that point as well, though, about 
um, you know, even down as far as the proposal, because I remember even in our own company when we did a number of years ago, when we when we revamped our proposals, we made them very visual because that's uh, the, on the CRM side. That's one of our key selling points is, and we made it very visual, very nice. And we embedded now, you know, because electronic like videos and all of this kind of stuff in it. And when you get feedback from a prospect where they say, I loved your proposal, and they're not talking about the, the, the things that are in it, the cost, you know, they're talking about how it looked. So you're giving yourself every, sing, every advantage you can have. Yes, yes, exactly. So yeah, we need to utilize these two things. Um, and, and going even further as well, um, if we talk about breaking up the entire sales process, um, going that step further, because construction is such a brilliant example, mm -hmm. right? You're talking about a million dollar contract right at the yeah. end or a $500,000 renovation extension, whatever it may be. It's big money. No matter how sure. much it is for your market, it's going to be big money, um, no matter where you are in the market. Why is that all we're focused on? And, and other industries do this very well. We need to splinter that big offer so we can chunk it down. So what we teach for our proven sales process, certainly for a building company owner, is you've got your contract, but that's right at the end. And you've got your mm -hmm. marketing, that's right at the front. You're breaking it up into all these little steps. But we actually teach them to have two products ahead of a contract so that it just chunks it down and it makes it much more manageable and bite-sized and people are gonna be much more integrated into the process and much more invested really, because they're parting with money early on, your relationship is changing, they're a customer now, uh, not quite a client, but there's a different kind of relationship. Sure. And so what we have is, what's one thing you can splinter off of building a home? What's designing it right yeah so one thing we teach is sell them concept designs you know and this this comes like sort of midway through the process if you know they're qualified you've done a deep discovery with them let's talk about well, why don't we take care of the design of your new home and let's let's do a concept design agreement as so you can charge a small amount of money and you can do the the renders the design the floor plans um and once they're okay with that well let's talk about a preliminary building contract and then that's a little step further. It's a little bit more, but it's splintering. So by the time they finish their preliminary building process, they got every bit of information in front of them so that they can just sign on the dotted line to start a contract. And, and that's the power of a proven sales process. It's splintering, it's breaking it down into much more manageable bite-sized chunks for, for everyone involved at salespeople and the prospects. No, I, 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 I really like that concept because if you think about it in this example here, uh, if I sign up and for the design, I mean, potentially in my mind, potentially I can take that design and walk away at the end and I can go somewhere else, right? I uh, don't necessarily have to stick with you, but it's a, it's a, it's a trust building exercise as well. Exactly. Exactly. Now it depends on the building company. It actually also sure. depends on like laws and stuff, what you can do mm -hmm. with that design, but that is exactly right. It's like, look, you don't have to spend a million dollars with us mm -hmm. off the bat. Why don't we just talk about a few thousand dollars and we'll just do some concepts. We'll sit down. We'll do, we've, we, we've got an in-house uh, draftsman um, who can do some squiggles of your ideas and, and you want to just sell them on that, make it spectacular and, and, and wow them at every stage in the process so you can get the next yes and continue moving mm -hmm. on. And it's just like you said, it just alleviates that risk for everyone, you know? And, and gets you into a collaborative relationship very early on, right? Because yeah, you're during the, the yeah, because you're in the design process, right? I mean, you're inputting your ideas, they're translating the ideas, they're inputting their ideas, you're working collab. So in many ways, I mean, you're build, you're building that great foundation for a trusting relationship at the at very early on. Yeah. Plus you're getting that emotional buy-in, right? Like they're mm -hmm. already visualizing cooking in their brand new kitchen. Mm -hmm. They're parking in their triple garage, you know, they're with the kids in their swimming pool. Like they're invested already. Keep that energy, keep that high at sales 101. It's about emotion, right? So yes, we need to do more of that. Get them to put themselves in that position and get them involved. Yeah, no, I think it's a great idea. And I think anybody who's in any industry, if you can do that, what, what Sky's just talking about here about chunking is a great idea. If you can just get a little buy-in early, you can get them used to working with you. It's going to make the rest of the process that much easier. Um, what's one last thing you would say about, uh, about sales process? What one last message you would leave with our viewers and listeners? I think the sooner you can put one in place, 
the sooner you can start measuring the results and the sooner you can start taking action and knowing where you need to train people, get your marketing team aligned with your sales team, get better collateral. Um, so it really comes down to it's, it's not something that is optional. It really is a requirement in any company today. Um, and if you were to put any system in place, get your sales system in place first, really understand that because without sales, we don't eat, the company doesn't exist. So we need to get this nailed. Yeah. And to be honest, uh, if you, if you think you already have a sales, uh, a sales process in place, but you haven't revisited it in like the last year or two, then you don't really have a sales process in place. You have some, you have something, but it's not an up-to-date sales process because it is supposed to, it, it should be a dynamic um, it should be a dynamic process that you're always revisiting just to make sure that it's aligned with what's happening with your buyers and what's happening with your industry, et cetera. Totally. Plus, if you can't put a KPI next to each mm -hmm. stage in your sales process, it's not a good enough sales process. It's yeah. not defined enough, I suppose we could say, because yeah. it means there's, there's no measurement to get to that next step. You want to know for every hundred leads, you're going to get a sale at the end, whatever it may be, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So you want to know no. what Yeah, I'm, absolutely. I mean, there's so, I mean, and I think, you know, process is your friend. And I think that's, uh, some, I said that to somebody the other day and they said they were going to get t-shirts made of that, but um, <laughs> maybe not. But in process really is your friend. And I think that's the big, uh, that's the big myth that you need to get away from, from those in sales who think that process is the enemy. No process is actually your friend. Because as you said very early on in this conversation, Sky, is that process actually creates the freedom to put your own personality and all the and your own energy and, and creativity on top of it once the process is in place as opposed to with no process to be honest uh, it's just chaotic yeah they're reinventing the wheel each and every time mm -hmm. whereas if they know where they're going let them enjoy the journey let them take yeah. the prospect ah, perfect perfect way to end yes enjoy the journey Okay, well, all of Sky's information will be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, sure. So, um, obviously, co-founder of the Association of Professional Builders, and, and just very quickly, the Association of Professional Builders, my father and I launched um, a number of years ago, and the main reason for that, or why we launched it, is we truly do believe that residential builders, so custom home builders, remodelers, they deserve to be earning more money for the service they're providing. It's, it's a big job what they do. But we also believe that consumers deserve a far better experience than they're currently getting. We've all heard the horror stories about this industry. But the thing is, the two go hand in hand. Builders cannot provide a world-class experience on tiny margins. Um, mm -hmm. And so they've got to provide a better client experience. So to do that, they actually need to systemize their building company. Um, and that's exactly what we provide at APB. So we actually provide systems for builders to deploy into their building company from sales all the way to marketing, to financials, handover, onboarding, everything. Um, and, and that's mainly what we focus on. So we can transform normal custom home building companies into industry leaders and professional builders. So that's the big reason behind what we do. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. It's fantastic. So really creating that kind of elusive win-win situation where the builders win, the, the customer wins and everybody's, everybody's happy. Because like you said, I mean, it's a, it can be a fraught experience sometimes if there's, if there's misaligned expectations or if there's a bad experience on either side, to be perfectly honest. Uh, so I think uh, it's great what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun. Good. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.